Our leadership team asked if I might say a few uh, parting words as I make my transition from being president at DTS to being chancellor. Uh, we have just a couple of uh, days left in my role, and uh, so I have a few things I would love to share with you. Uh, there's a sense in which all of us have been entrusted with equal entrustment by God, and there's a sense in which we've been given unique entrustments by God. In the parable of the Minas in Luke chapter 19, each was given the same entrustment, but there were differing rewards for differing amounts of faithfulness. In the parable of the talents in Matthew chapter 25, uh, there were differing amounts of entrustments based upon ability, and yet there was the possibility of earning equal reward for equal faithfulness. It's that uh, commendation that's found in those parables that all of us long to hear from our Heavenly Father at the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. And that is, well done, good and faithful servants. That, that phrase is simple and yet profound. Uh, well done, good and faithful servant. In that phrase, I see a triad of traits that if resident within the leader would make him or her worthy of uh, being followed. Uh, the first of these traits is ability. Well done is the phrase, and it speaks of competence. It implies the need for developing or equipping with skill. Willa Foster remarked, quality is never an accident. It's always the high result of high intention, sincere effort, intentional direction, and skillful execution. It represents the wise choice of many alternatives. Our beloved Prof. Hendricks, who's with the Lord, wrote in his book with Bob Phillips, Values and Virtues, and I quote, every job is a self-portrait of the person who did it. Autograph your work with excellence. The challenge in reproducing leaders of ability is to inspire proper equipping. In the New Testament, we see leaders are equipped to provide the necessary TLC, as I like to call it, for the church. T stands for teaching, and that's the ability to rightly handle the scriptures. Leading, L is for leading, that ability of the under-shepherd to take people towards the chief shepherd. And caring is reflecting and refracting the love that God has for us toward other people, all of us as co-recipients of grace and mercy. Trait number two is integrity. I get that word from uh, the term good. Uh, that speaks of character and implies the need for a spiritual walk with the Lord. Coach John Wooden, the long-term coach for the UCLA Bruins basketball team, said it well when he challenged, be more concerned with your character than your reputation. Your character is what you really are, while your rep reputation is merely what others think you are. Psalm 78, 72 states, and David, David shepherded them with integrity of heart. With skillful hands, he led them. The definition of integrity is unimpaired condition, the quality or state of being complete or undivided. Listen to the hymnic description of character by David in Psalm 15 and reflect on the mirroring contradictions that come from too many directions in our current cultural environment. Lord, who may dwell in your sanctuary? Who may live on your holy hill? He whose walk is blameless and he who does what is righteous who speaks the truth from his heart, and he has no slander on his tongue, who does his neighbor no wrong, and casts no slur on his fellow man, who despises a vile man, but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps his oath even when it hurts, who lends his money without usury, and does not accept a bride against the innocent. He who does these things, David said, will never be shaken. David Cottrell in his book, Listen Up Leader, says that integrity is the cornerstone of leadership. And he goes on to say, if a leader sacrifices his integrity, nothing else really matters. Stephen Berglos, the psychologist at Harvard Medical School and author of the old book, Success Syndrome, says that people who achieve great heights but lack bedrock character to sustain them through the stress are headed for disaster. People want to be led by leaders whose words and lifestyle match. That's the second trait, integrity. The third trait is fidelity. We get that from the word faithful, and that speaks of our commitment. 
It implies the need for long-term loyalty. Author Gordon asserted that nothing is easier than saying words, nothing is harder than living by them day after day. And Eleanor Roosevelt said, one's philosophy is not best expressed in words, it's expressed in the choices that one makes. In the long run, we shape our lives and we shape ourselves. The process never ends until we die, and the choices that we make are ultimately our responsibility. Fidelity is the power of passion to finish the race. If we will be the leaders that other potential leaders will follow, and if we train the leaders whom people will want to follow, then among the characteristics of godly leadership that the Bible defines, ability, integrity, and fidelity, those must become our chief concerns. I'm finishing in a very weird way my role as president. Dr. Yarbrough is starting in probably the worst way he could ever start. This is an unusual period, unprecedented things going on in our culture with disease, economics, unrest. Uh, I wanna thank you to our staff and our faculty. I wanna thank you for being patient with me and my service as president over these last 19 years. And I wanna thank you for your service to the Lord in spite of who's in leadership. I want you to pray for Dr. Yarbrough and his wife, Jennifer, every day. Barbie and I do that every single night. Uh, we're praying as he uh, ramps up. We're praying as he steps in. We're praying for him to make housing transitions. We're praying for him as he assumes leadership in a very, very unusual and difficult way. We've had a wonderful year of enrollment. We've had a great, uh, strong support uh, from our donors, uh, but we're uh, entering in some very unknown days in the days ahead. Uh, we need to be praying for our leadership, our board, our administration, one another. Uh, Ephesians chapter six in verse seven says that uh, we who are, uh, whether bond servant or free, we are to serve the one we serve as if we were serving the Lord. Haddon Robinson, another one of our profs who's now with the Lord, said that when you uh, serve your boss as if you were serving the Lord, you serve the Lord by serving your boss. That's really a principle of biblical employment. It's a principle of biblical loyalty. It's a part of the fidelity. So I would encourage you to, uh, as a, a president, uh, when I serve the board as if I was serving the Lord, then I serve the Lord by serving the board. Uh, we who are in downline positions uh, in different capacities at the seminary. Uh, our loyalty to the Lord is expressed by our loyalty to those whom we serve and those whom we serve uh, all around us, regardless of our position. And so I encourage you to stay faithful. I encourage you to develop your ability. I encourage you to continue to develop your character. I finish with a great passage that comes as the application of what uh, resurrection life will one day look like. And that is, uh, in light of the future, how do we live in the present? Paul finished 1 Corinthians 15 when he says, therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Why? Because you know that your labor in the Lord is never in vain. I encourage you to stay faithful. Be people of character. Develop your abilities because well done, good and faithful are the ultimate commendation that all of us desire. It was the Russian poet Boris Pasternak who said it this way, it's not revolutions and upheavals that clear the road to new and better days. Listen to this but someone's soul inspired and ablaze. May our souls and our passions be inspired and ablaze with Christ. Uh, the number one love relationship of our life that determines all the other relationships around us. The Lord bless you as you continue to serve the Lord at DTS.
for the 20 years that you have been president of our school and the 35 years that I've known you, I wish to add to a cacophony of courses say, uh, voices saying to you how grateful we are for the years that the Lord allowed you to be our leader. When I think of the two mottos of the school, I think of three words. One motto is preach the word. And I believe in your tenure, you have done well and you have directed our path. The other two words are truth. And when I think of you, I think of a person that is truly devoted to the Holy Scriptures and you have loved us all well. The words that come to my mind are sincerity, authenticity, compassion, generosity. You have been all of that to me and I thank you very, very much and wish you well in the years that lie before you and Barbie. Thank you. Mark, you have been an outstanding president of Dallas Theological Seminary. Though you're a humble servant leader, the Lord has used you mightily to lead the seminary through a turbulent changing culture and volatile economic times without compromising the doctrinal integrity of the seminary or its commitment to biblical truth. And as a good leader should, uh, you are leaving the seminary in good hands with a terrific faculty and administration led by Mark Yarborough uh, to lead the seminary into its second century. Uh, it has been an honor uh, to uh, labor alongside of you, brother. Uh, you have made my job easy with your leadership. Uh, thank you for your service, Mark. May God bless you, Barbie, and the rest of the Bailey family. Godspeed. My heartfelt congratulations from all of us, Mark, as you end your years as president of Dallas Seminary. Not only do we acknowledge your years of service, so does our Lord. I say that because God's Word often calls attention to the way God's leaders come to the end of their years of service. You'll remember Enoch ended his years walking in close fellowship with God. Moses ended his as the deliverer with clear eyesight, and he was strong as ever. As David ended his years as king, Psalm 78 tells us he had cared for Israel with a true heart and led them with skillful hands. Paul's final testimony provides a fitting tribute to your years, 19 years, as our seminary's president. You have fought the good fight, you have finished the race, and you have, throughout your presidency, remained faithful. Thank you for staying at it. Thank you for ending well. Dr. Bailey, it has been one of the treasures of my life to serve under your tutelage. First as a student, then being hired as your research assistant, and you've placed me in a variety of other roles, and I have had the privilege of watching you lead up close. Thank you, my friend, for blazing a trail of faithful footsteps to follow. As I step forward into my new role, uh, I have been given the ultimate leadership model in your walk, and it will be my privilege to strive after that. And I'm thankful you're not going anywhere to serve in the new role as chancellor. Uh, don't be surprised if I pick your brain on a regular basis. 